Hey, howdy ho, Lions fans. Welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast. This is our special Senior Bowl edition with none other than our special guest, Dave Phipps, special teams coordinator for the Detroit Lions. I think that's the team's name. I'm, I'm getting all stumbled. Yeah, I think so. I think that's my position, too. <laughs> Golly. It's hard to believe that, you know, the one thing I'll start off saying, I mean, it, it really is like to be a coach in the National Football League and doing what I'm doing. I mean, I just can't tell you how fortunate I feel. And, and I mean, I'm living a dream. That's Absolutely. awesome. You've been yeah. at it for a, for a while too. So uh, uh, you've been in Detroit for a little bit. So welcome to Detroit. You know, welcome, welcome to Mobile. You're your coach of the American team this week. That's something yeah. I'm not I'm not proud of that. Obviously, in order to get this coaching gig here, you know, it comes with not a great record. So we don't love that. Yeah. But uh, I will tell you that we are fired up about being here, and it's going to be a tremendous advantage for us just in the whole evaluation process. Absolutely. Now you you have a massive love for college football. That's just kind of part of. I don't know if it started as a pole vaulter in La Jolla or, <laughs> or as You're a. You're digging deep uh, on yeah. this. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> I love La Jolla. I, I, I lived in SoCal yeah, for a while. Tough place so, to grow oh, up, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why did you leave? <laughs> but uh, you, you, you played. You know, you did special teams in Arizona. You did uh, safety, and that's interesting. How how was it playing free safety? For, for for you is that where you kind of that where you kind of really started hauling or what was the impetus to kind of get yeah the real impetus like for football for me is it's interesting how it worked out because there was a point where I was getting ready to go into my senior year of high school and I very seriously contemplated stopping playing football and just focusing all my attention on pole vaulting um, I was recruited really more to be a pole vaulter than I was to be a football player. And then uh, I had a tremendous high school coach, man. This guy I really idolized a lot. He's just a really unique, dynamic person. And uh, he just put a lot of time and effort into players and helping them grow and develop. And he really changed my life in a lot of a lot of good ways. Um, but uh, what happened, he, he said to me one day, you got a chance to be a really good football player. And I was like, this guy's crazy. You know, I mean, I, I, I was one of the worst players on our team, you know, forever. And uh, so he gave me a chance. He, he told me that. And when he told me that, I was like, gosh, maybe maybe I do have a chance to play. And so I changed my mind. Um, I ended up playing my senior year of high school football, and I absolutely fell in love with it. I had some success. It was really the first time in my life playing football that I really had a lot of success that way. I uh, had a good season, and I had the most fun I've ever had. Um, and it really started by putting a commitment in in the, in the weight room. And he had told me at the time, you have a chance to be a great player. You just got to make a, a commitment to it. Yeah. And uh, so I worked out as hard as I thought I could work out at that time and uh, put a lot into it and then got a chance to play. And I saw the fruits of the labor, and you worked hard, and then it paid off on the field, which was really a big thing for me. And then that that was like okay I can't I can't let football go right. I've got to be a part of football. And so you went right in, right into the coaching career, right? Yeah. yeah. So then I went to the University of Arizona. It all worked out there. Yeah. And then when I went there, the first time I jogged out on that field for the first game, I was like, man, I got to be a part of this the rest of my life. It's a special atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah, it was it was yeah. just incredible. I mean, just to see all the fans, people going crazy. You know, I mean, it was it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you you went straight into coaching. Did you ever do anything else besides football? No, I knew I had known really since my freshman year that I wanted. I had thought thought that coming out of high school because yeah. of this coach. And then when I got into college and my freshman year running out on the field, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, and so I knew the whole time as soon as it was over, I was going right in. Um, yeah. As soon as I get in, then I got a chance to go to Holy Cross College, which is great. Rumor had it you wanted to start a podcast, though. Was that true? Yeah, no, uh, I, I do. I'm, I'm thinking, like, when maybe this thing's over, when they don't allow me to coach this game anymore, then maybe I can get a chance to start a podcast. There's actually a good friend of mine. He's an offensive line coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. But uh, – uh, we we our offices were next to each other, and we used to joke back and forth that we're going to start this podcast. And it, it, every other week, we'd add something to it. You know, yeah. we're going to have the sweep it under the rug segment, sponsored by some broom company yeah. or whatever. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. Right. Yeah. So it was like half joke, half truth. So yeah. we'll see where that yeah. goes. Cool. <laughs> So talk about an event like the Senior Bowl and the value that you get out of this. Um, I know, like we said, I know how much you love college football. You love the game of football. The kind of tying that, that, that move from college to the pros and the evaluation that happens in between. There's so much that goes into it in the NFL now compared like even 20 years ago, right? It's blown up. 
Tell us about about what this does, what this means for you, and, and and some of the pieces that really mean something. Yeah, one thing that is really neat about it is all these guys are young. You know, when you're part of a football team in the National Football League, you got some veteran players who've been around a long time. You got some, you know, who are real young, and some teams are younger than others, vice versa. But at the end of the day, all these guys are young. You know, yeah. and none of them have been paid yet. You know, right. so they're all out here and they're trying to prove themselves and they're trying to, you know, pay attention and do the right things. Their agents have told them, hey schooled them up you know yeah. whatever oh, oh yeah 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 i'm sure i'm sure you get the, the canned response oh yeah for sure yeah. and the special teams coach is one of the most popular guys because they're all saying hey get to know that guy you know you got to make sure you impress him <laughs> you're a fourth job. round pick you can, you, you're playing special teams yeah. you might not play offense or defense you're gonna be on you're gonna be with him a yeah, lot <laughs> right yeah so you know they come in all prepared uh no but really it's great for us because uh, in the evaluation process there's some things that you can do in this event that you just don't get in you know the course of whatever the regular evaluation process without having this um, but like you can give some guys some instructions or directions and and you know let's see this out on the field and then you get a si- chance to see like can he do it right, right. you know or did it go one ear out the other and he just can't put those words or that video that you showed him or those examples into action on the field which is really a big part of it. One game. of the things I wanted to ask you was: there's there's a lot of guys out here that maybe don't have return experience or don't have experience playing on coverage units. Uh, how much teaching do you have to do on that, just to get in a rudimentary level, so you can feel the team Saturday? <laughs> yeah, so that's been great too. So one thing that's happened for us is like we get together with Brad Holmes and his staff and those guys, and we say, hey, you know, are there any guys you want to see? return punts that haven't done it in college yeah. or there's some you know some things that you want to see out of some of these guys and okay well, who are those guys we'll make sure we get them out there we get them evaluated and put them in some of those positions so it's really good that way sure anyone really standing out to you this week no i would say i can't give up all that info right. the first thing dan campbell said to us he <laughs> yep. said okay everything that we learn in here stays in here we can't give this out this is our advantage so i have a sense that maybe brad told him that first before he told yeah, everybody sure. everything goes downhill right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all have been good about that. Like we, we've talked to a few people, and nobody's nobody's letting stuff fly, which is disappointing from 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 our standpoint. But from teams locked down, man, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, good. Yeah, y'all are tight. Yeah. We got good leadership. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you about that because that's something we've talked about, and and you know, in, in my day job, I. I do a lot of stuff around leadership and I want to ask one of the things we noticed about Dan was he seems to be the type of guy that you know you have leaders and, and managers right some people hire you and then stand over you and tell you how to do something some people say I hired you because you're really great at your job and I want you to do that job it's it's the sense we get is that Dan brought f- folks in that he trusts and that he wants and he knows can do a great job and he it's a trust but verify let's let them do their job is that really how it's operating from, or is how does this work? For uh, he, he's tremendous, and I would say he definitely lets you do your job. Now, that being said, I would say just personally for me, and uh, I mean the one thing that I'm always just so nervous about, you just want to make sure you do right for him. You respect the guy so much. And, I mean, every night during the season you go home thinking, you know, it, it, did I put in a good enough plan for him? Did I, you know, did, did I go the extra mile for him? I know he's doing it. I yep. know he does it. I see him every day and the way he goes about his job and he's going the extra mile and you're like, man, I just do not want to let him down or disappoint him. He's giving me a great opportunity here and you yeah. just want to make sure you do right by him. And, and how about inevitably in any organization conflict arises and how you handle that really – talks about the DNA and the, and the health of an organization. It seems like uh, the, the staff there, everybody seems to have a good way to be able to work through any conflicts that arise and come to the other side together. Whether you agree or not, people understand why and move forward and accept. Yeah, and I think one, one of the great things, I mean, we got a ton of really competitive people. I mean, we got a bunch of ex-players. These guys are really talented in this league, and you, that doesn't happen without being you know, competitive and a little bit of an alpha and out in front and sure, all that stuff. Sure. Um, but I think the biggest thing is everyone's got a lot of respect for each other. And when you have the respect, then it's a whole lot easier to get a, uh, get along, communicate, and resolve problems. Everyone always talks about communication, relationships, and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, why, why are those things formed, you know? And I think when you have the amount of respect that everyone has, it makes all that other stuff easy. Sure, sure. Definitely. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see – I mean – 
this uh, let me you, seven years with the the Eagles prior to to the Lions. Yeah, you you get built in. You do a lot of things. I mean, you change things every year. Have you ever had a year in which you pulled out so many stops <laughs> out of your playbook as you have this year? Because when I'll tell you, when we finally kicked the ball off the first time after the first drive at SoFi, I was there. I about I, I just started laughing as as hard as I've laughed in ages because I just couldn't believe we kicked it onside kick and on, on the first time we, the, the foot touched the ball in the game. It was amazing. Got to me. I man. loved it. Yeah, yeah. I would credit the head coach for that. But, no, but your players are doing it, right? Oh, yeah. No, no I mean, those are the two people who I'd credit. I'd credit the head coach and the players. I mean, yeah. Coach Campbell is just great. I mean, he's looking for any advantage he can get. Um, and at the end of the day, the biggest thing is he's not afraid to try. Sure. And he also, if it doesn't work out, it's not like, you know, what happened? Oh, my gosh, can't I ever do that again. You know, I mean, yeah. he's like, hey, man, we're going to let it rip. And there's one of two things going to happen. We're going to get it. And if we do, that's obviously great. But if we don't it's going to send a message to everybody you know we came to play we're coming to win we're giving everything we got we're swinging with everything we got and a lot of times you don't get the onside kick the defense just like we did against arizona the defense goes back out there and they stop them they're fired up they're like hey man our head coach is all in on this thing we're playing to win out here it really makes a difference doesn't it it makes a difference it makes a difference the way the players play and so there's a uh, psychological benefit i think too even if it doesn't work out and i think dan really understands that and so it's been great so there's there's one thing i want to ask there's there's a rumor out there that we're working on some stuff in the off season that we may see jack fox under center at some point (laughs) (laughs) yeah i love that i'm I'm not sure about that i can't answer that either but i've been sworn to secrecy but no we definitely got jared's out there to punt we know it all bets are off right (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. can jared punt (laughs) (laughs) i don't know that yet (laughs) yeah Uh, we definitely need to do some exploring this off season it'll be interesting to see what we come up with you you had you had to work with what five kickers last year you ever had a, a season like that where there's just th- that constant like some of it was injury some of it was performance just it, it walk me through like you got a kicker one day and then the next day he's not there anymore you got a new guy in you get to try to learn what he does how you can help work with him how you can help him that, that you had an interesting season yeah it got a little exciting that's for sure yeah. we like it a little less exciting yeah that, that, would, that would be great yeah. Let, let's have one kicker if, hopefully <laughs> yeah. fingers crossed that would be nice. Um, but I will say on the flip side of that, I mean, I think we got a lot out of all those guys, and I would really credit that to Brad Holmes and his staff. I mean, those guys always had kind of the next best guy in line um, and a guy that they thought highly about, and that really helped us. And those guys really went in, each one of them, and played really well in their own way um, and uh, helped our football team out. So that was good. That's great. Good Dave, I know we have limited time, and, and I don't want to – I mean, I want to take you all day. Well, I mean, I, we can do this all the time. Once a week, but no. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what something? Uh, Jerry Jacobs is doing it. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is he really? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, did Jerry a hard knocks with him. Jerry's great for us. Uh, really I love, love that Jerry. man. He's what a guy. story he is. I mean, he's he's, he's so inspirational. Yeah, he's doing well in his rehab. So he, yeah, talk, he, you got you got somebody coming back that that lo- loves playing for you. Yeah, talk, he's a great dude. Man. Talk to him. Eamon. He should be on the stage calling out a okay. draft pick this year as a UDFA <laughs> to make it and have his story on what he did. He's got to be up on that stage. He's got to call out a pick. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. All right, Dave, thanks a lot for joining yeah. us. Appreciate it. And uh, we're going to see you again next week. Yeah, much appreciated. <laughs> right. All right, All right Dave Fitt, Detroit care. Lions, special teams coordinator. Thanks, man.